In this video, we're going to take a look at the schemas that are created in a standard 11G database. When you install Oracle, there's a ton of schemas that are created behind the scenes. And for those of you who are not familiar with using the Oracle database, this may seem pretty overwhelming as to what all of these different schemas do, why they're there. And this video is just meant to go over some of the basic schemas that are out there so you can understand how they fit into the overall Oracle architecture. If you've used Unix or Linux at all, you're familiar with the fact that there's a super user on every Unix system called root. And the root user can basically do everything that you can possibly imagine inside of a, a Linux or an Oracle server. The Oracle equivalent of that is a user called sys, S-Y-S. The sys user uh, is created automatically when the database is created and has full privileges on anything inside the database. So I set up a connection here inside of Oracle SQL Developer to connect to my sandbox database as the sys user. So when I connect as the sys user, because I have total privileges over anything in the database, I can see uh, anything else inside the database. And if you're familiar with SQL Developer, you know that they break down all of the different components inside of an Oracle database into these structures here, tables, views, additioning views, indexes, packages, all the different things that you can own inside an Oracle database. At the end here, there's another little uh, plus sign called or, uh, Other Users. And this Other Users plus sign allows you to look at all of the different other users that are on your system. And you can see that there's a ton of users that are created inside the database. And if you're not familiar with all of these different things, uh, like I said, it can be pretty overwhelming. So we're just going to go through uh, each one of these real quick and explain the basic functions of what they do inside the Oracle database. First one up here is the admin user. Uh, the admin user is used by something called Apex. If you're not familiar with Apex, Apex stands for Oracle Application Express, and it's a development tool that actually lives right inside the database. There's a whole bunch of videos that we have on our site uh, related to Oracle Application Express and how you can create applications really quickly. Uh, everything is done in a browser. You don't have to worry about installing anything locally on your PC. It's a really great environment for you to create applications very quickly. It doesn't take a lot of time to learn. You can be really uh, productive on Oracle Application Express in a real short period of time. The admin user is going to hold a whole bunch of information about Apex. And you can see that we have these other Apex schemas here. Apex, this is the original version of Apex that's installed with the database, which is breaks down to 3.2.0.0. I've upgraded my Apex version inside this database to 4.1. And again, there's a, another video on our website that has information about how to upgrade your Oracle database to the latest, greatest versions of Apex. Um, those Apex schemas hold a whole bunch of tables and views and procedures that allows Apex to function. Again, if you're not uh, familiar with Application Express, it's a really great tool. I really encourage you to get out there and, and experiment with it. It's part of the standard Oracle database, so you don't have to pay any extra money for it. Uh, it's right there for you. So it, it's one of those really nice tools that Oracle basically gives to you for you to do some application development. There's an anonymous user here also, and the anonymous user is used for HTTP access to something called XMLDB. And XMLDB is a high-performance native XML storage and retrieval technology that's built into the Oracle database that allows you to manipulate XML documents relatively easily. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with XML, it's a standard markup language, and XML documents are used but in a lot of companies to exchange information back and forth with each other. It's also kind of the standard language that's used for just about any type of service-oriented architecture uh, development that's out there. So XML is all over the place if you're interested in doing any kind of SOA work. And the anonymous user is going to handle a lot of those XML schemas and XML type processing inside your database for you automatically. We talked about the Apex users. This APP QoS SYS is something called uh, uh, Quality of Service Management. And Quality of Service Management is a new feature that's been introduced in Oracle 11G. There's not a lot of documentation on, out there for it yet. Uh, Oracle is in the process of developing a whole bunch of tools so you can improve your Quality of Service Management inside your Oracle database. This schema is going to hold that. When you install your database, you have the option of installing what are called sample schemas. And sample schemas are just what they sound like. They have some basic information for you to explore the different features of the Oracle database. The BI user is one of them that has a bunch of kind of standard tables out there and some views that allows you to go out there and look at what's called business intelligence. There's some things that are unique to the schema where if you run through some of the examples that Oracle provides, uh, you can learn some uh, of the business intelligence features of your Oracle database.
CTX Sys is the owner of a, a technology inside the Oracle database called Oracle Text. It used to be called Intermedia. And what it does, it provides indexing, word and theme searching, viewing capabilities for text type documents. So if you're working with content management, you might have PDFs and Excel spreadsheets and Word documents. You want to store those in your database. You want to index them, give people the ability to search on them. CTX user is going to handle a lot of that stuff for you. And again, it's going to own a lot of procedures, special indexing capabilities. The DB SNMP user is part of what's called an Oracle Intelligent Agent. And the an Intelligent Agent is a process that runs on a remote node in the network and it does a whole bunch of things where it gathers information, it handles data collection, uh, it cancels jobs, it runs Oracle Enterprise Manager jobs, uh, it checks for events, it does a whole bunch of processing behind the scenes that allows you to uh, manage your Oracle environment pretty quickly and easily. Everything that you he see here that starts with DEV underscore, and there's a whole bunch of users that are there, that's part of the Oracle uh, application server WebLogic. Uh, if you're going to install some of the advanced features of WebLogic, like service-oriented architecture, like the Oracle service bus, and if you don't know what these things mean, uh, you don't have to worry about it. They're enterprise-type tools that allow you to create these complex distributed applications. We have a, a bunch of videos on SOA and middleware technologies if you're interested in that. But if you're going to use those pieces, uh, you need a repository to maintain information about all of those different pieces. And Oracle creates all of these uh, different schemas here to handle those pieces of information. So you can see you have stuff like Discover, BI Platform Activities. When you install the schemas that go along with the middleware pieces, you have the option of specifying a prefix. The default prefix is DEV underscore. Uh, you can call them PROD underscore if you have a production environment, you want to do some other things. Uh, I took the default values for working locally on my machine. And all of these different schemas are associated with, you can see portlets and portals, web center, all of these schemas are associated with uh, the Oracle application server. The DIP user is something called the Directory Integration Platform. It synchronizes changes in the Oracle uh, Internet Directory with applications in the database. Oracle Internet Directory is an LDAP directory that allows you to store information about all the different users in your organization in a standard way. Uh, more and more companies are moving towards that as their security mechanism inside their organizations. Uh, the DIP user maintains all of that different information. The EXFSYS is used for something called expression filters. Uh, this was introduced in 10G. It's a component of something called a rules manager that allows the application developers to store, index, and evaluate different kind of expressions in different columns of a relational table. So uh, it gives you a real interesting way of being able to slice and dice the information inside your uh, Oracle database. A really powerful feature that's out there. Uh, the flows files, anything with flows underscore in front of it as part of Application Express, handles a lot of the different pieces that go along with Application Express. Again, you don't have to worry about it. You'll never probably have to go into any of these schemas and look at the data. But those are some of the things that are uh, it's going to hold for you. And then, like I said, flows files is all related to Application Express. HR and IX are part of the sample schemas. HR has all the human resource stuff. IX has stuff called information transport. And if you go through the different um, tutorials that Oracle provides for you, they make use of these different schemas so you, they can show you different pieces of the database. MD data is used by Oracle Spatial to uh, store geocoder and router data. Uh, Oracle Spatial is uh, a, s uh, a set of technologies that Oracle has inside their database that allows you to plot graphical uh, spatial data uh, based on location. So very powerful feature that allows you to, to do a lot of really interesting things inside your database related to that. MDSYS is the actual owner of the Spatial, which is part of uh, another Oracle technology called Intermedia. Uh, the schema that holds the storage syntax, the semantics of all the geometric data types that are out there. Uh, again, you probably won't have to go into these schemas individually, but it's good to know which ones are there. The MGMT view management view is used by the Oracle Enterprise Manager database control. Uh, it's used by Enterprise Manager to do a lot of things underneath the scenes. It uh, also interfaces with uh, a lot of the different pieces that are out there to gather information about your Oracle database. ODS stands for the Oracle Directory Server. ODSSM holds uh, metrics that are associated with the directory server. And the Oracle Directory Server is just a nice piece of technology that, again, allows you to have information on different nodes all over your system and to maintain information about the different users that are on your system. 
The OE user is another one that's part of the sca sample schemas that has uh, the order entry information in it. OLAP SIS is used to hold OLAP catalogs. Uh, OLAP stands for Online Analytical Processing, and it's the technologies that are used in data warehousing and being able to uh, ask really complex questions from your data. The Oracle database can be set up in a whole bunch of different ways to handle either kind of transactional data, which is usually short, small inserts and updates, or analytical data warehousing business intelligence type data, which is where you're querying huge amounts of information onto your database at the same time. Uh, the OLAP SIS holds a whole bunch of really interesting information that allows you to set up your data warehouses a lot easily. Oracle OCM, that stands for Oracle Configuration Manager, and it's used to collect information about your system and upload it to the Oracle repository. This makes working with Oracle support a heck of a lot easier. Uh, you can gather information about your system. It'll gather just about every piece that you can imagine. Again, it's not information you would probably be interested in, but it really helps the Oracle support people a lot uh, when you have to f um, submit uh, some kind of problem to the Oracle system. Or data is um, I actually don't have any information about that. I'm not sure what ORD data uh, is used for. The ORD plugins goes along with um, there are plugins that interface with Oracle Intermedia. So uh, if I had to guess what ORD data was, that probably h handles a lot of the uh, Intermedia type data that goes along with your system. ORD Sys is the administration account for Oracle Intermedia. Outline is a real interesting schema that holds query plan uh, stability information. So a lot of times when you're moving from one system to another, you may have set up a query plan that goes after data in a very specific way. You don't want the optimizer to change that around, so you can create these things called query plans, which define how you're going to tell the Oracle engine to retrieve information on a regular basis. Uh, the outline handles those uh, types of things when you're moving from system to system. OBW Sys and OBW Sys Audit handle information when you're using a tool called Oracle Warehouse Builder. Oracle Warehouse Builder is uh, a client-side tool that uh, maintains information about your database and allows you to set up really complex things inside your data warehouse relatively easily. Uh, a lot of the information that Oracle uh, Warehouse Builder uses gets stored inside the database. PM is another one of the sample schemas, has product media information in it. The Scott user is a, a, a sample schema that's been in the Oracle database since forever. Uh, there's a whole bunch of um, tables in here, again, that show you a whole bunch of different features that go along with the Oracle database. The SH user is another sample schema, has sales history information in it. SI information schema uh, is used by Intermedia. It uses something called SQL MM Still Image Standard. Um, I'm not an Intermedia expert. I, I don't know what that stands for, but that's what it stands for. Uh, spatial CSW and Spatial WFS are uh, users that handle spatial information inside your database. If it's if spatial is not something you use on a regular basis, these schemas just kind of sit there and don't do anything. Uh, but if you do use spatial, and obviously uh, these schemas are used a, a great deal. Sysman uh, is the default super account user used to set up and administer the Oracle Administration uh, Enterprise Manager. Uh, the Enterprise Manager is a graphical tool that allows you to do a lot of things uh, through a web-based interface to administer your Oracle database. Uh, Sysman is the user that handles all of those different things. System user is kind of one step down from the sys user. Uh, a lot of times uh, people are not comfortable going into the database as the sys user because they have full privileges on everything. Uh, system is used for, uh, ad, uh, for uh, database administration. A lot of times uh, users uh, will never, uh, DBAs won't log into their database as the sys user because again, that, that is the super user and you can do a lot of damage inside your database if you don't know what's going on. System is kind of one step down from that, uh, but it gives you just about all of the privileges out there to uh, do database administration on your system. WMSYS is the owner of the workspace uh, manager workspace manager is used uh, various features inside of Oracle. XDB is used for XML DB. Uh, we talked about that a little bit earlier. It's used to uh, manipulate XML documents uh, very easily. A lot of really powerful things that you can do there. XS dollar sign null. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any information regarding what that scheme is really used for. 
but this video in general just goes through and talks about all the different uh, schemas that are out there. Some of them you'll use uh, very heavily. Your Apex users, if you're doing a lot of Apex development, you're going to use these guys pretty heavily. Uh, other ones you may not use at all. Uh, like I said, you won't even have these dev schemas in there if you're not using uh, the Oracle uh, WebLogic middleware server. But if you're going to use the advanced features of that, you use a tool called the Repository Creation Utility uh, that populates all of these different schemas with seed data and is used by the advanced tools. So when you install 11G database, you really have a lot of these users out there. It can be overwhelming, but hopefully this video sheds some light on some of the different users that are out there and makes it a little less scary.